Hello everybody, thank you once again for joining me. After Grand Prix Memphis, there were a couple of decks that came out that were of interest to me, and I wanted to cover a budget version of Sultai Aggro. My name is Justice, my handle is Sarkhan, so I want to make sure you subscribe, and give me a thumbs up if you like what I'm doing here. Um, the deck idea is pretty pretty similar to old school, or I guess last standard cycles, uh, Golgari with Wild Growth Walker. Uh, Jade Light Ranger, stuff like that, with the addition of Hostage Taker, Thief of Sanity, and, and Hydroid Crisis. Um, now, I'm going to call this a budget deck, okay? But the reason I'm calling this budget is the, because the land base. It calls for like, like 13 rare lands, and that alone will, will break our budgets for uh, like our wild card use. But other than that, if you had some Golgari built up from last cycle... Uh, you're in business with this deck. You can make it work. So I'll cover the deck tech, and then we'll play through a couple of games and see how we're, we're doing it. Now, I'm not going to play this game in ladder. I feel like in order for this deck to be competitive in ladder, like really, really good, you would want to make sure you have the, uh, the uh, land base for it. So if you do happen to have the land base, and you can make some substitutions up in the actual card base here, you might be in pretty good shape. So let's cover it. We're doing four land of war elves, good old one casting, one green... Uh, it's a 1-1, one, one, adds one green mana, super good for ramp. Um, can come in pretty handy later to pump things like Hydro Crisis too. Three cast downs, one on a black, it destroys a non-legendary creature. There's a few more legendary creatures we want to worry about now. Um, so there's a few options that we'll find later in the deck for those. But for the most part, all the big scary ones are, are not legendary. Uh, two Incubation Druids. If you don't have these, you could easily use uh, like Druid of the Cowl, which is also a 1 and a green. It's a 1-3, and it adds 1 mana, uh, one, 1 green mana only. So Incubation Druid is, of course, the rare version. Same casting cost, 0-2. It adds 1 mana of any type of a land you could produce. Or if it's got that counter on it, like if you adapt it for 3, which is also very powerful, it comes with 3-5. Um... If it has a counter on it, it produces three mana of that type instead. Very strong card. This deck calls for two of those. Um, four Merfolk Branch Walkers. Everybody should have these from the, um, from the just as part of the set. I think everybody, even if you're playing now, you get four Branch Walkers for free. Uh, one on a green. It's a 2-1. It explores when it enters the battlefield. Very good with Wild Growth Walker. One on a green. One three. When a creature you control explores, he gets a counter. And you gain three life. So the gaining the three life part is sort of our protection against aggro decks because we'll gain that life back before they can do enough damage. Um, typically, if a wild growth walker sticks to the board against any kind of aggro deck, that's the game. It's it's over because they can't overcome the life gain or the counters in a lot of cases. Two find finality. So if the find side of this is two, um, well. So it's one black or green and one black or green. So if you have a black and a green mana, you can still cast find. Uh, you can return up to two creature cards from your graveyard to your hand, or the finality side for four, a black, and a green. You can put two plus one plus one counters on a creature. Then all creatures get minus four, minus four. Super good uh, board clear if you do it that way too. Um, so you'd want to do that on one of your bigger creatures. It, probably this would be more of a find in this deck, but you never know. Four Jade Light Rangers, good old one and two green. Um, it looks like... It's, it's like she's wearing overalls in this picture. It's kind of funny, like the farming merfolk who went out and got a couple of swords and was like, you know what, I'm going to explore. Um, but it's a 1 and 2 green, 2-1. Two, she comes into the battlefield, she explores twice, pretty much. Uh, which will, even if you get two lands, it will still trigger Wild Growth Walker twice. So it's kind of nice. Uh, two Thieves of Sanity. This is this is a cool pick, just because we have the blue at this point. Uh, it's a 2, a th 1, a blue, and a black. 2-2 two, two flying. When it deals combat damage to a player, you can look at the top three cards of that player's library. Exile one of them face down. They can't see it. Then you put the rest into their graveyard. So it also serves as like a mill. It's kind of cool. And you can look at and cast that card for as long as it remains exiled. So even if you lose Thief of Sanity, you can still cast that card, and it's all colorless mana. Two Vraska's Contempts. So for two and two black, you exile a creature Planeswalker, gain two life. Really nice. One hostage taker, so for two, a blue and a black, and this one's a little different than Thief of Sanity. When it enters the battlefield, you exile another creature or artifact until hostage taker leaves the battlefield. So in this case, if they kill your hostage taker, you lose the exiled thing. Um, and you can cast it for as long as it remains exiled. So like the same thing applies with Thief of Sanity. You cast it for any color mana, but if they resolve your hostage taker before you can cast it, then you lose the, the thing. Um, sometimes you don't need to. If you just need to get something out of the way, it's a good option. 
one Vrosko Golgari Queen. Now, again, I'm calling this a budget deck, but this is where we're going to hit the Mythics in the deck list here. So there's like, all these Planeswalkers and Hydroid Krasis, but it's budget in terms of mana. Um, so I do have a, uh, one of these Planeswalkers, two, a green and a black. You can uh, sacrifice another permanent if you do gain one life and draw a card for the plus two. Now, you don't have to sacrifice anything. That's optional. You wouldn't gain the life or draw the card, but she still gets the loyalty. For minus three loyalty, destroy a target non-land permanent with converted mana cost. Three or less, very useful. And the minus nine, her ultimate, is you gain an emblem with whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player. That player loses the game. So that's super cool. I've never gotten that to go up. Actually, no, I did. I did once. Um, and that's pretty rewarding, too. I also kept the Karn in here. This is an old school trick from uh, the prior sets. Golgari decks ran Karn, like a one of or maybe a two of in some cases. I, I like him. I think he I think he fits. So I kept him in here. I only have one, so I put him in there. I do have three Vivian Reeds. I got kind of lucky with him. So I threw all of her in. No, I didn't. I only got one. I made the other two in October, right, right after the reset. I went into mono green. It's sort of a mistake. I was like, hey, I'm going mono green. This is going to work out really well. Whatever. Um, but now I've got some pretty decent cards. So I threw three Vivian Reeds in there. And then two Hydro... Oh, let's cover Vivian. Right. Um, so her plus one is a dig. You, you look at the top four cards, grab a creature or a land, and put the rest on the bottom of your library. You do have to reveal it, but, you know, it's, it's a wonderful dig. It's awesome. Her minus three is destroy target artifact, enchantment, or creature with flying. Also very powerful. And then her minus eight, and sometimes that's what this deck becomes, is to keep Vivian alive until you hit the minus eight. And you get an emblem with creatures you control. All of them get plus two, plus two, vigilance, trample, and indestructible. So you just attack every turn, and they can't die. It's great. Running two Hydroid Crasises, this deck calls for four of these, obviously. So if you have four, throw them in here in replace of anything else on the list, pretty much, except your removal. And you should be all set. Um, it's a green and a blue and an X. And whenever you cast the spell, you gain uh, half of X life and you draw half of x cards rounded down each time so if you do uh three a green and a blue it comes out as a three three but you only draw one card and gain one life so um it's very useful to hit it on the uh, even numbers rather than the odd numbers but you know if you're if it's the difference between like a six six and a seven seven flying trample jellyfish well whatever go for it now here's where it gets squirrely is in the land base so i got three forests in here I do have four Drowned Catacombs. I made these right when Demir came out, because I was all Demir happy. Um, so you you might have some other lands. I did get lucky with Breeding Pools. I'll cover that in a minute. Uh, this is a blue and a black, and it comes into play untapped if you have an island or a swamp. I'm running four Submerged Boneyards. This is where you would want to run the, uh, the proper land. I, I don't have any of them. I don't even know what it's called. Um... Oh, I don't, I don't have any. Yeah, so we'd have to look at this new craft feature. I like this a lot in the game. Thanks, developers. Watery Grave. I've got zero Watery Graves. I don't even know what they're called. That's how few of them I have. Um, I would swap in any number of Watery Graves that you do have. That'll speed the deck up for you a little bit. Um, you'd want to run four Woodland Cemeteries and four Overgrown Tombs if you have them. I don't, so I've got three Golgari Guild Gates. It's the tap land for black and green. Woodland Cemetery is the, the check land, so if you have a swamp or a forest, comes into play untapped. I, I just don't have the four of them, though the deck still works. Now, I did get lucky with Breeding Pool. This is the shock land for uh, Simic colors, blue and green. Uh, so if you can play it untapped by paying two life, and I think this is what's going to keep me in business here. Also have only one Hinterland Harbor, so I've thrown a... I would do two hinterland harbors if you have them and take out the woodland stream just so you don't want any tap lands by default and then just three forests and that's the land base seems to work out pretty well so let's take a look at it we'll see how it plays um, we'll do a couple of games again just in like regular play mode here because um i'm seeing this deck a lot in the ladder in, in like ranked play and it is it's working really well but i think it's working really well in the competitive levels because they've got all the land that they need and it doesn't slow them down by a turn. So we might get slowed down by a turn. Uh, but it is budget and it is kind of fun to play. There was a, a few games I played earlier where our opponents just quit when they saw the jellyfish come out. And oh, it's a little slow. But we do go first. And we have all the land we're going to need. 
so I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with this. I'm gonna stick with it, and we'll just learn from this experience. If this is a terrible decision, then then we will know. Although I will have a turn three thief of sanity is a worst case scenario. So I don't hate that at all. Check lands, check lands. Okay, let's get a blue source out there. It can enter tapped. There's no reason not to, so. Don't have to worry about choosing which land to play. Her opponent has an opt. He played the wrong one. That's the pirate. Tefiri's the better opt. We all know that. And most of the ops, if you copy decks, um, like deck lists from the from the web, they're they're from Ixalan versus Dominaria. Discovery, are we up against uh is it Drake's? Vivian Reed will be a fabulous counter to Is It Drake's. And as we'll cast down. I think our Thief of Sanity eats a shock here. That's that's my bet. He's a marksman after all. A shock and a discovery is what the doctor ordered here. But I've got a couple of finds, so worst case scenario, I could use a find in a sort of a desperate attempt here to... Now, an island or a swamp. This is a forest island? Yeah, so this works just fine. Um, boy, that's slow, though. I don't like how slow that is. Hopefully he plays maybe a crackling... Well, it doesn't matter what he plays. I can cast it down or I can just watch it happen. I'm not going to worry about casting it down because Vivian's coming out next turn and I'm going to blow it up. Well, no, I'm not. I am going to cast it down because I want her to save the loyalty. It's just a, a preference of mine. So I'm going to do pay two life for this guy. And I just wanted her to have more loyalty than like a lightning strike would take to kill her. That's all I'm doing. The wild and we'll grab the walker. Shield. So now the obvious play here is Walker into Jade Light, and I want to gain six life, and hopefully turn the game around, though our opponent will be drawing cards like crazy. We'll have enough counters on the Walker to do a, a six point, four point finality. I can blow up the, the Drake with Vivian. So this will piss him off, something awful. Two lands. That's terrific. So didn't get anything out of the... You know what? Let's do the forest. Into the... I'm going to save the Lanawar Elf. He could be running Fiery Cannonade. There's not much I can do about Fiery Cannonade right now. Um, so why don't we just straight up take out the dude. This is nothing. And we will pass the turn. So now she's susceptible to... Um, like a lightning strike or something like that, but I feel like making the cast down or playing the cast down on the the crackling drake was a good choice to save her loyalty for that extra turn. I want to see if he'll tap out, and he wants to see if I'll I'll destroy Vivian to kill his drake, which I won't do. No one knows the wilds like I do. We'll grab a Hydroid Crisis. Should I play it next turn? It's a 4-4 Flying Trample. Gain two life, draw two cards right now. Or it's a 5-5. Why don't we make it a 5-5? Yep. And I like that we draw two that he doesn't see. That's kind of nice. So he's, he knew we had it, so I don't mind playing it a turn early. I don't think he's playing any straight up remove that Hydroid Crisis from, from the game cards. I can finality on the walker. His creatures die. My Crisis lives. My walker lives. He only has two red mana to play with. So now is the time, I think, for, um, for a finality rather than a find. We'll drop the Boneyard. We'll drop the finality pre-combat. I know it's weird, but we'll do it pre-combat. We will lose our... Uh, yes, we'll take the action. We'll put them on the walker. Our crisis is a 1-1 one, one, because it's till end of turn, right? Meet my now, there is a risk here. 
and him like having a shock or something, but it's a risk I'm taking, I'm not really worried about it. So now I'm ready, like I'm poised for victory here, even if he drops a... Well... If he drops a... Like a Niv-Mizzet, I would worry. But I, I'd Vivian the Niv-Mizzet, I would do that, I'd make that move. He scries, he's trying to get to a point where he can pump up that, and he, he's got the mana for it, for his Terramander. But uh, I've got the Planeswalker. I've got the anti-flying Planeswalker down. This deck works. This deck works well. I like it. So, I'm going to save this walker. I just worry about board clears right now. They're, they're all over the place. Uh, so we're going to kill the Terramander. That's not no joke going to happen right there. Mm -hmm, there's the dive down. So now this is interesting. His one Terramander is going to do do decent things here. It's about to be a 5-5. Five, five. Though I have a 5-5 five, five as well. He's got the 3 in here, right? 1, 2... He's easily got it. So he's got enough mana... But I could finality on my on my hydroid crisis and make it. I could, and then every explorer. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna make him. I'm gonna call this little bluff. Unless he's got a counter spell. Nope. There it goes. Okay. He could have done it. He could have saved his terramander, and. Uh, and use it as a blocker, but then I would have two two good blockers against his one Terramander. That's why he ended the game. This deck is it's working. It's it's working well. This is this is why these guys are pros at this, and then they, they make these awesome decks. I never would have guessed Hydroid Crisis could mix with Golgari and be anything good. Like I don't I wouldn't have seen that coming. But that's why these guys do this full time and I, I still have to work. But that's fine. I like my job. I'm not complaining. Either the matchmaking system has been taking its sweet time all day, or not a lot of people are playing in, in play mode right now. In regular, like, unranked matches. Ooh, we'll get to see how Incubation Druid holds up. Okay, so this is interesting. This is These are all slow lands here. So we're looking at like a turn three branch walker, it <laughs> looks like. Uh, we'll see, maybe we'll draw a regular style land. Um, we'll go with... I'll go with Submerged Boneyard, because there's a small chance I draw into a forest or a shock land. Uh, it did not happen. Great. So, <laughs> so we'll do this number here. Okay. Okay, he's doing it too. Oh, it's a memorial deck. I'll do Walker. I like Walker before Incubation Druid because I'm not really on the hook to get anything else out other than some exploration. Kickers. Interesting choice. Yeah, we can't Jade Light Ranger just yet, so we'll drop the Walker and actually hope for a land of all things. So let's see what we get. We got one. It's a Breeding Pool. We'll pay the two life. And then we will drop the Incubation Druid. Swing in for two. That was pretty quick. So even though it was a nice slow start there, I don't think this is going to be a terrible, terrible way to go. And I could even I could steal his Elfame Druid, and I feel like that's a smart move because this is a good ramp source for him. I don't have any kickers, but I could also use the mana production. You know what, if he's playing Saplings, I'm going to save that, because that, he could have, like, a Tender Shoot Dryad for me. That would be nice to steal. Mm. Blue and black, yep, check this out. So I can do a Jade Light. And we will Library the Branch Walker for sure. That'll come out next turn. 
I'm gonna drop a thief of sanity and start stealing stuff right away. Uh, yeah, we'll attack with everything. And I could sacrifice everybody to a finality, but he's got a lot of cards in hand, so I don't know if I like that idea all that much. So I'm just gonna roll with Thief of Sanity and my big wild growth walker and see what happens. So he's ramping up big time. Yeah, okay. could take a champion. <laughs> it's fun to think about what you could steal sometimes, like, hmm. What would be more frustrating? Okay, I'll take it. I don't mind a woodland cemetery, that's fine with me. Ooh. Yeah, so, so check this out. Let's do... We'll attack with everything first. I can adapt my incubation druid right now, but I'm gonna wait, because, because Thief of Sanity is about to steal some nice things. Okay. This is an interesting choice. I wouldn't gang block that, but... So, you don't have to take Divine Visitation here, just because it's the scariest card. Whatever I don't take goes into his graveyard anyways. So I think what benefits me the most in this deck is the Ledev Champion. I'm not going to be making tokens. So I, I don't care. The Divine Visitation can go in the graveyard. That's fine with me. Um, and then we will pass the turn. He might get funny and try and block with something, and if I can block and combat trick with my Incubation Druid, I will. I've, I've been in the habit of telegraphing my adapts it, for no reason. Like, adapt is at instant speed. Has he seen enough? Yeah. It works. It's working. It's working real good. Very happy with, with how this deck is working out. And I'm all free to play, too. I haven't spent any money building this collection up. I've been doing it for, I mean, for a few months, you know, I've been playing since since the summer, like six months, but there was a collection wipe in October, like October 2nd, I think is when the game came back online, and ever since then I've been building my collection slowly, but I'm at the point where I can build a good enough deck to hopefully climb the ladder, um, and theoretically I do have the wild cards to buy the land I need, I just would rather see other deck concepts happen. So that's the only reason I haven't spent the the wild cards on the land. Man, are we gonna get a game? It's like thirty seconds between uh, between matches here. Forty. People are doing only doing a draft now, apparently, or just ranked games. Sometimes if it goes on too long, it'll auto, like, kick you out. Huh. Maybe I got disconnected, and it hasn't told me yet. There we go. No, I guess not. Is it really going to take a minute to get into a game? That's a long time. What, are we making a Hot Pocket? My goodness. Okay. Cool. So this is kind of what I wanted to see here. Okay, this is interesting. So we'll do a breeding pool. It'll enter tapped. Don't need to pay the life yet. Don't have a one drop. And then next turn, Hinterland Harbor comes into play untapped because the breeding pool is both the lands we need, and then we can start dropping, dropping some heat. Wow. Thought erasure? No. So we'll do. We'll have to do a jade light just to get some power down here. Yep. Fine with another incubation druid for sure. And then I can still explore into some lands here, so I'm not all that worried about like losing out on on a creature. Although we're gonna eat a cry of the carnarium, aren't we? I have to get a branch walker down. 
Just to see if I can dig for a land right here. Yep. So Cry of the Carnarium really shuts down our, our game plan because they would be exiled instead of in the graveyard. So this would be a good test. Let's see what we got going on. Mortify. Saw that coming. However, next turn, if this isn't Kaya's Wrath, it wasn't Kaya's Wrath. Why don't we attack? Oh. Well, that was a mistake. Did not intend to do that. Oh well. I didn't want to attack with my druids, but whatever, it's fine. I'm not gonna cry about it. What I wanted to do was attack with just a branch walker. So if I can get Vivian down, cleansing Nova time. Well, okay, there goes Vivian Reed for sure. And now what we'll do is we'll just adapt our, our incubation druid. And I wonder if it's gonna let me tap. No, it taps. It taps the druid. Okay. I think they updated the settings. Auto tap? Huh. Maybe we'll have to take that off there. Because ideally you would tap, oh, just tap the other druid first, right? That's what you should do if you want to leave the auto tap feature on. Because I really like just dragging cards to the battlefield. Um, but this was not a healthy update where it taps the druid who <laughs> you, you want to attack with when you, when you adapt. But, you know, whatever, it's fine. Okay, we're getting close to the end of this game here. Are we going to win three in a row? Man. There's the cleansing Nova. Okay, so now we'll do... Oh, nope. We will do our good old Thief of Sanity. I'd like to save the mana for a cast down. I don't think it's a priority right now to drop a find and pick up a... What would we get... Ah, I think we're good. I like Incubation Druid, but I think they can stay in the graveyard for a minute. He knows what we got. If we can sneak through with an attack with Thief of Sanity, then he won't know what we got. We could exile a card face down, just leave it for a while. Which I kind of like that idea. Is he going to settle this? Frosca's Contempt. I could cast down my own Thief of Sanity and then find him again. But I'd rather see how the rest of the deck plays out. Let's, let's see what's going on. I don't think he's got a creature in there, so I don't think cast down is going to work on much else. Which begs the question, is there a better option for cast down? I don't know. I guess that's what the sideboard is for and... In professional play, you would swap out cast down with something else. It's a theory. That's a good choice. Okay. Keep up the pace. I could use a Vraska's of my own. I'll have a counter spell open. I've got Vraska. This gets countered for sure. Not ready to start sacrificing land at this point. A lot of people make that mistake. Um, I've got six mana. Although we might have been controlled out this game. This this could not this could be going his way at this point. Esper control is strong now too, so that makes sense. Hmm. Except me. So let's try and get the find to stick first. 
So I have a jade light and a branch walker. He knows what's happening right now. He's well aware I drew into a wild growth walker. He's got visibility on these cards. I love the eyeball. That's terrific. Yeah, yeah, he knows what's going on. So we don't get him back, and we'll try and get the walker to stick instead. This is where we find out he's got yet another counter spell. Hmm. Hopefully it's just a quench. We can pay the man. Oh no, he's yeah, he's doing his cover up. Yep. That's not great. What are the odds we ever get a creature that can do one damage? He doesn't have Ezcanta down yet, which is very encouraging. I like that a lot. Hmm. As long as we win, nothing okay, we'll just get up to ten. We'll see our walker get... Ooh, our walker sticks. How terrific. Kaya's Wrath, Cleansing Nova, Vraska's, Mortify. He's got all the options in there. Gosh, there's like 20 removal cards these days. Oh, and he's about to get his emblem too. That's not ideal. He might, he might tuck my walker away though, just to try and get him. If he tucks my walker, it says to me... Oh, that's, that's a smart move. So this says to me that he can't stop an attack from happening. Which is kind of encouraging. Terrific. Well, I feel like attacking Teferi is sort of futile with a 1-3. And I don't know if he's running too much life gain in that deck other than Absorb. But but we'll see. We'll see. You know what? I'm not done yet. Okay, so now we're at the point where I could start, if Roska lands again, um, we're at the point where I could start sacrificing some land in hopes of drawing into better cards, but I gotta think he's ready with a counter spell for Vraska. We will see. He knows it's coming. He can fully see my hand. Oh, and this is, this is the turning point of the game. He's drawing into everything he needs to control me down. So if Vraska sticks, I'd like to... Well, I'll, yeah, I'll sacrifice one of my unnecessary lands, like the Guild Gates or something. It, I mean, it really doesn't matter. I think I've got enough mana base to, to do all the things I need to do, except for Hydroid Crisis, of course. Got another one? So he's trying to exile him. Which we'll go with. We'll go with that. Again, I could have casted him down, but... I would be shocked here if my, my Vraska doesn't need a counter spell. And I think if that's the case, we'll just accept defeat. I don't think there's anything else we can do. Well, okay. I lead the Golgari now. It's pain. We will sacrifice one land. Draw into another walker. I think it's holding priority for his chemist's insight. I don't think it's holding priority for a counter spell. It is a gamble I am taking. Ha! Alright.
maybe he casts it now. He's got a lot to work with here, too. This is scary. But if I could draw two cards a turn... And hopefully draw into... I, I've got Jade Lights in here still. Oh, I've only seen one Jade Light. i got three more Jade Lights in here ready to go. So, you know, might be able to turn this thing around still. Although, he's two turns away from Tefiri going crazy. He'll be exiling everything. If that's I mean, that's the game's over at that point. No time for a break. So now he's discarding. Or he's going to mortify my walker. Oh, he's counting mana. Hmm. I wonder what he's counting for. Okay, that's Vraska's. Okay. He's now exiled three of my walkers. I let that happen. That's okay, I hope. The eldest Reborn. Okay, so now I've got to sacrifice. Yep. Frosca goes away. I'm going to discard my cast down. Um, so, okay, so the game's... I mean, this game's over. He's got me. We've been controlled out. He's at seven in his graveyard. He's going to get his Kanta. Dig with Tefiri. Dig with his Kanta. Yeah, that's the game. Alana Warolf isn't going to help me. Okay. Well done. He has one. So against control, we didn't do so hot. Um, but I feel like if we got a faster start, if I remember right, the start of this game wasn't entirely as fast as it could have been. Um, but if we get a faster start, even versus control, we've got a pretty good chance of winning with this deck. So I like it. Overall, I think it's a pretty solid deck. Um, but thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate all the support I've been getting lately. You guys have been uh, amazing. And uh, thank you for all the subscribers who have helped me get started here. I really do appreciate it. Have fun playing.